Frequency tables. Frequency tables are great for organizing data. For example, if you were analyzing the student weights in a particular class in kilograms, and this is what you came up with, well, this would be really hard to analyze or interpret because it's just a bunch of raw, random data on a page. Well, you could take that and you could organize it into a frequency table. And we're going to take a look at how you do that in this video. But you can see here what they've done is uh, put the weights into different intervals and then figured out how many students fall into those intervals and then counted up uh, how frequently uh, each piece of data had occurred in that interval. And this is where a frequency table gets its name how frequently something falls into a particular interval. These are the steps in creating a frequency table, and you can refer back to this if you want. But let's go ahead and create some frequency tables. So here we have some bowling scores. First thing you want to do is you want to find the lowest and the highest piece of data. So it looks like the highest bowling score is 290, and the lowest bowling score was 11. So after you find your high and your low, you have to come up with a scale. And you want to scale from 0 to something that would incorporate all those numbers, all those bowling scores. So because our highest number is 290, why don't we go from 0 to 300? That's going to be our scale. And now we need to break that scale up into intervals. Are we going to go by 1s, 2s, 5s, 10s? Well, you don't want an interval that's too big, and you don't want one that's too small. So let's try an interval of 50. We're going to break it up into 50. So I'm going to go from 0 to 49. I'm going to go from 50 to 99, 100 to 149. So each time I'm going up by 50s. And I need to go all the way up to, this will be our last one, 250 to 299. And that will incorporate all our scores. Then you would go through and we would just make tally marks. We had one score that was 290, one score that was 19, one that was 190, and we would go through and just figure out uh, where all these scores would fall. Now I'm just going to make this up just to speed things up a little bit here. So when you were all done, what you would then do is you would just add up those tally marks. So how frequently did somebody bowl between a 0 and 49? Three times. How frequently did someone bowl between a 50 and 99? Two people. And three people here. And we would just go through and see how frequently that happened. So that's all there is to it. Really, this is the hardest part, is coming up with the scale and then breaking it into intervals. Let's do another one. So here's some populations of towns in upstate New York. You always start the same way. It looks like our lowest population is 209 people, and it looks like the largest population is 15,582. Okay. So our scale then, we would want to go from 0. We could maybe go from 0 to 20,000. I'm actually going to go from 0 to 16,000. And it's entirely possible that people will do this differently, and it's, um, it would be perfectly fine. So if someone did from 0 to 20,000 or 0 to 16,000, that would be perfectly acceptable. Now we need to break this up into intervals. So you could go, I think thousands is probably too small, because that would be a pretty large frequency table. I'm going to go by two thousands, and I'm going to show you a little trick. So I'm going to go from 0 to 1,999. I'm actually going to do these numbers first. So I'm going by 2,000s. So 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, 12,000, uh, 14,000. And that's, that's good. So one less than 4,000 would be 3,999. One less than 6,000 would be 5,999. One less than 8,000, 7,999. So I'm just going to do one less. This would be 9,999. 
One less than 12,000 will be 11,999. One less than 14,000, 13,999. And our last value would be 15,999. And then he would just go through and figure out where each town would fall. And you would make your little tally marks. Again, I'm just kind of making this up to speed things up. And then after you're done with your tally marks and checking off all the different towns, you would just count up your tally marks and that would give you your frequency. So again, this is the tough part in making a frequency table. Let's look at another example. Here's some starting salaries. And we're going to identify our, our, our high salary and our low salary. And we're going to pick a scale from zero to what? Looks like zero to 100,000 would be good. And then pick an interval. And I think a good interval for this would be 20,000. So zero to 19,999, 20,000. I'm going to do the same thing I did in the last one. I'm going to do, I'm going to count by 20,000s. And that would be 80,000. Oh, that's perfect. So one less than 40,000 is 39,999. One less than 60,000 is 59,999. One less than 80,000, 79,999. And then, of course, this would be 99,999. And then you would go through and just see where the salaries would fall in what interval and then count up your tally marks and then that would give you your frequency. Let's look at one more. So this is minutes of exercise per week. It looks like somebody doesn't exercise at all and we have someone here that exercises 290 minutes a week. So we have to come up with a scale. Zero to what? What would we use for our scale so it would incorporate all the numbers? Well since the highest piece of data is 290, why don't we go from zero to 300. And then what interval are you going to use? How are you going to break that scale up? Um, I would probably go by 50s on this one. So from zero to 49, and then I would do 50. So I'm going to go by 50s. And really, this is by far the hardest part. It's just coming up with the intervals. So one less than 100 is 99. One less than 150 is 149. One less than 200 is 199. One less than 250 would be 249. And one less uh, than 300 would be 299. Perfect. So we would be able to get all of our data into these intervals. And you know, you definitely want to cross these off as you're doing them. Make your little tally marks. And then bundle when you get five. And then when you're done with your tally marks, you would just see how frequently each of those occurred in each interval. So really, that's all there is to making um, a frequency table. Now, here we have a frequency table, and we have a problem. There's a little problem with this frequency table. See if you can see what it is. I'm going to give you a hint. It has to do with the intervals that we've chosen here. I don't know if you noticed, but we have some intervals that overlap. Now this is a problem, because what if a student sold 10 tickets? Where are you going to put that tally mark? Would it go here, or would it go here? And you can see that we have the same problem with 20. If a student sold 20 tickets, where are you going to put that tally mark? It's important that when you select an interval that they don't overlap. You'll notice on the one we just created, these intervals don't overlap. So be careful of that. Let's take a look at one more frequency table. And we also have a problem here, and it's with our intervals. Do you see what the problem is with these intervals? Take a look at them. Well, the problem is we have inconsistent intervals. You'll notice that we go by 50s here, and then all of a sudden our interval switches to 25. Um, it looks like it's, well, what is it here? That's uh, an interval of 14 or 15. And then all of a sudden we have an interval of 60. 
and then an interval of 150. You, your intervals need to be consistent. You need to go by tens, twenties, twos, a hundred, a thousand. You can't switch. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to creating frequency tables.